for the archive where I'm going to be putting this up on my YouTube channel, I'm recording this on August 9th, 2021. Um, and the little current event news thing I want to chat about. This will be normally do a vlog style review. I'm doing the current events thing on the Twitch channel and then discussing it more. And this will be up on my YouTube channel in edited form. Probably actually at the start of September. Um, just going by my current video schedule kind of thing. So things probably will shake it out a bit more about that then. By then, I may even do an a, 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 uh, appendix, appendices, or no, appendix, just one of, just one of it's an appendix, um, to the video, depending on any new updates that come by from then. Um, as this recording, the news has just broke that the merger has been finalized between Crunchyroll and Funimation for the uh, for their merger um, that Sony has fully acquired Crunchyroll. So, what does this mean for the anime industry, really? Um. Because uh, this is a comp. On the one hand, I, like everybody else, is subscribed to too many streaming services. Um, I'm subscribed to pretty much all the anime services uh, Crunchyroll, Funimation, YouTube, uh, Crunchyroll, Funimation, um, iDive, Netflix, and uh, Retro Crush. So all bases covered there, um, plus additional other ones on top of that. Um, Hulu subscription. Uh, that one I can probably cancel. Uh, and a couple other ones on top of that. Um, Amazon Prime. And so, looking back on look at all this and um, Disney Plus. Okay. Hulu's attached to the Disney Plus, so maybe less so canceling the Hulu. Um, but so we're with where we're at now, um we've gone from uh three slash four major anime streaming services to two yeah, two 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 slash three. Depending on how you want to count Retro Crush in this. And or as dedicated MA streaming services, not including the Netflix specific stuff that ends up in Netflix jail. And it's a tricky situation out of look at this. Um like the stuff High Dive gets, High Dive and in turn Sentai Filmwork gets, it's not like they don't get high profile and big name stuff. Though admittedly a lot of the stuff that they've gotten, really with the, which they've later released physically, has also been stuff that's been um, like from, we've come off of Amazon and that sort of thing. Like, for example, uh, with the upcoming release with a dub of Vinland Saga and that sort of thing. And otherwise you've got Crunchyroll licensing some stuff. You've got Funimation licensing other stuff for streaming and even then, like, some of the stuff that Sentai was picking up was stuff that was licensed by Crunchyroll, but Funimation elected not to pick up for physical distribution. And this begs the question of what happens when everything is, you know, all in-house? And that, like, in that regard, like, not everything, everything, but, like, on the one hand, Sony slash Funimation has not been shy with sub-licensing their content out to other streaming services as well to make it available in other places. And in terms of Funimation, in terms of uh, Funimation stuff like Demon Slayer and that sort of thing showing up on Netflix, ultimately they want you to show, they want you to watch their stuff. If they want, if you watch another streaming service, that's okay. They get, they still get paid for that. And they have the physical side of things. So if you decide to fork over the money for a more pricey Aniplex um, box set of Demon Slayer, 
they cool with that too. In fact, if seeing the Netflix version is what f pushes you over into doing that for, um, for immediately either for Demon Slayer or for uh, Fate Apocrypha or any of that sort of stuff, they are perfectly fine with that. They are oh, like in whatever avenue they get our money, they are okay with that. Even if it and if it means partnering with the other company, that's fine too. So like, this isn't going to cause. All of Funimation stuff to sudden Funimation, yeah, all Funimation stuff suddenly just disappear off of Netflix. Example. I it's certainly like not just like in a oh but not yet sense maybe later but like not at all. And on the one hand of my l having a limited budget, I don't fault have like I, I there's part of me that goes I I don't mind having. A situation where I don't have to spend quite as much money, like oh, I'm, that's another ten bucks or fifteen bucks or whatever a month less that I'm spending on streaming, um, because these two services are combined. On the one hand, on the other hand, competition is good. Competition is great. You having competition is nice. Um, like when. When so when Disney bought out Fox, as much as I was like, "Yay, the X Men are in the same wheelhouse as the MCU now," I'm like, "But I don't want Alien and Pre But I, I I don't want the rest of the consequence not consequence, but I don't want all everything else that came with it. I would rather just the like just the X Men had gone over and all the rest of the Fox stuff had stayed." right where it was, because Fox has got a plenty of perfectly great stuff in its wheelhouse that it could it could survive without without the X-Men. It could arguably thrive without the X-Men, um, considering how well that some of the non-Logan and non-Deadpool X movies have done. Um, and it could thrive without the distribution for the original Star Wars trilogy or anything like that. But now that this, now that those two studios are combined, we have reduced competition there, and that's iffy on me. And same sort of thing here, because as much as I'd like to say, oh, High Dive can be just as rigorous a competitor, it's not necess not necessarily the case. I mean, we still like we still have other companies out there that can do some stuff but um in terms of anime distribution and anime licensing and streaming and that sort of thing but like G kids has been bringing out uh plenty of great anime movies um also they're partnered with but like also they've been partnered with uh you know uh hbo max and Warner's with the the Ghibli distribution, among all the rest of their other stuff, like that's where uh, Promare is available for streaming and that sort of thing. And getting back to Funimation, HBO Max is partnered with Funimation and um, or rather Crunchyroll for some of their content. And so, assuming that partnership persists, I mean, yes, the Crunchyroll inclusion of content on HBO Max is because Warner, past tense, owned. Crunchyroll. That is no longer the case now, so what happens going forward with that chunk, too? Does the... Um, forgive my wiggly fingers. Um, does I try to appropriately just gesticulate the flow of information and relationships between various interested parties with the Warner and Crunchyroll relationship gone, does the anime on Crunchy... on Funimation... or the, the anime on HBO Max go away? Certainly for Crunchyroll, I don't think they'd mind have, having that relationship remain. Having having anime on a mainstream streaming outlet that lots of people are already subscribing to, be it Funimation, be it uh, like for the but being a, be it Netflix, Hulu, or HBO Max, that benefits the anime industry as a whole, normally, but. 
On the other hand, if Warner is like, eh, this, this, this doesn't actually benefit us that much anymore. We were keeping it on there as an advertisement to, to promote our Crunchyroll brand, and that brand's not our band, so we're paying that money to somebody else. So why should we bother? Maybe we shouldn't, like, that's, that, that's another question for what's going to happen. Uh, what about Crunchyroll and Funimation as separate sites and separate apps? The Crunchyroll app has, gen like, re the site is in a very, very recent redesign. Um, I actually kind of like it a lot. Um, and their player has gotten an overhaul, which has... I would argue is a significant improvement on what they've had before. And all of this combined is better than the garbage that's on the Funimation website. Um, related to speaking of players, um, like actually, but yeah, like first off is the Crunchyroll player. Like, are they going to implement that Funimation site and use the Crunchyroll site? Kind of roll things over into that. Um, their better player and that sort of thing, or never the twain shall meet, or God forbid we all get the Funimation website and the Funimation player, and with that the Crunchyroll news site gets the axe. And on top of that, I'm going to bring back the high dive, the distinguished competition, relatively distinguished. There, are, on the one hand, their player has functionality that's neat with the ability to. With them basically having jumped on board and the whole idea of hey let's party watch with people before this was a th before was a thing we needed to do because we were in quarantine and none of us can see or talk to each other and we were all desperate for any form of social interaction uh but otherwise their while well, their player on the website is all right that player on apps on your television it to uh, your console or your Chromecast, or even to an extent on your phone. Uh, not so good. Um, I've had more than a few problems with the fun with the high dive app. And so the question being is like, actually related to this is with high, with like Funimation, with those two streaming services combined, do those, an do anime fans go, well, I've got a bunch of, cash freed up from one subscription service, but I've already budgeted this for subscription. Do they just go, I'm just going to stick it in my pocket and maybe get a cup of coffee later? Or do they go, I've already budgeted this money for streaming services and anime in general. Do I send, do I take this to another streaming service? Do I go to Retro Crush or High Dive? Um, and do all of a sudden... The comp does one of these two competing services get an influx of cash influx of cash from the from this ideal situation if we're assuming for the moment that, that we still have to have the streaming serve that we have streaming service merger go forward that crunchy roll Funimation must get high the my my ideal situation would be that that money goes to another streaming, that we get a price hike or price drop on Funimation Crunchyroll, where it's like, okay, we're all we're all one happy family with all paying common amounts of money, so we're going to roll everyone over to a combined subscription plan where it's like a little more than what you're paying for one of them, but not um paying for one of them, but not as much as you're paying for for both. Like, for example, say, one's on a $7 plan, one's on a $12 plan. We're, we're going to roll all these together into a $10 plan, um, split the difference, more or less. And, and then, in that way, if you're just a Crunchyroll subscriber and you have, um, like, you're paying uh, 3 bucks more, but you also have access to all the Funimation content, um, if you're a, just a Funimation subscriber, you're paying 12, you're getting two bucks less, but you're getting all the Crunchyroll content. And if you're subscribed to both, you are saving seven bucks a month or you are saving, not seven bucks a month, you're saving, 
nine bucks a month, which you can then take and do something else with. And ideal situation with this is that money goes to if you're not subscribed to High Dive already, you're not subscribed, you're not, you're not on the subscription plan for Retrocross already. I go, okay, I'm putting that money into High Dive. I'm putting that money into Retrocross. I'm gonna go to High Dive and watch Votoms and Legend of the Galactic Heroes and Pat Labor and uh, um, Vampire Hunter D, the original, and all this stuff they got on there new stuff, old stuff, and it's great. And they get an influx of cash and go, okay, I'm going to use this money and we're going to fix our player on the apps. And we're going to use this to license additional content and be while not overstretching ourselves and make ourselves a more real competitor to Funimation and Crunchyroll. Or it goes to Retro Crush and it goes, okay, we're going to make sure that some of these streaming subscriptions we have for this older stuff lasts longer and we'll have some more extended partnerships with discotech and other services and other and other older labels so that for example we can have as a hypothetical scenario here um the new discotech gunbuster ova release available for streaming on the site for longer or even we'll have stuff in hd um we'll have the Gunbuster release in 1080p um, instead of a standard definition or lower definition release, that sort of thing. So that's, but I, the problem is we, the na this is the nature of the beast when it comes to mergers, particularly of in, particularly mergers in niche, in niche fields, is you can never really be sure that that'll be the case. And unfortunately, like, the messaging about this going forward hasn't been so present. We haven't gotten much, like, actual messaging about what this was going to be. What, what is our final, what is the final form? With, with when Funimation and Crunchyroll form, is this merge... Is this the fusion dance or is this perfect cell? Uh, <laughs> that's that that's the question. The figure the Dragon Ball Z comparison is appropriate because you know Funimation tributes to Um and we never got an answer to that question going forward, and the hope that I'd had, and I suspect lots of other pe other people in fandom who pay attention to the industry side of things. Uh, we're hoping too. Was when we had heard about the FTC having reservations about this merger. The, the FTC at, keep caring about antitrust in anime, maybe not in, any, in a lot of other things, but at least in anime. And then going, and then all of a sudden it goes through without any real public disclosure of what what changed. What changed people's minds? What got them to um, go, okay, I get this now. And uh, and this isn't this isn't as bad. This isn't monopolistic as we think it is. That that there's an there is actually enough room in the market for this merger to happen. It's not It's not necessarily going to mess things up. We'll see how this goes. Um, but one other wrinkle that makes me wonder where things are going from here is I subscribe to the Crunt to the to the uh, Criterion channel as well, and last month and last month. Criterion Channel ran a bunch of anime that have never been distributed by the by the Criterion Collection. Criterion Collection has run anime, not a lot. They ran Akira back in the they have an Akira release from back in the Laserdisc days. I suspect it's probably going to cost you a pretty penny if you get that. Uh, I don't know how much Laserdisc collector values go, but I suspect anything with the Criterion Collection name on it, 
it's going to go up a bit anyway, um, but even more so for something that didn't get released into a later format by the Criterion Collection. So in any case, they were really, they they had for streaming a bunch of anime, um, some Satoshi Kon, mainly Paprika and Lenny Mactress, or to put it another way, the Satoshi Kon films that that if you're going to tell somebody who's a, a big cinephile what to watch, you you'd actually tell them to watch Perfect Blue, but you'd probably also mention those two because. There's a selection of cinephiles that are suckers from Mutler, um, are yep suckers are are suckers from movies about making movies, but not like metatextual movies about film, but not in a um, Shiro Bako informa informative and instructional se and educational sense. Um, so like those like those aren't like those two aren't my first picks for Satoshi Kon movies that I would put on uh, maybe Paprika, but that I put on um, the uh, put on Criterion channel, but they're like my they're my second guess. And then they had Belladonna of Sadness, and none of these have been released by Criterion Collection previously. I'm like, but these have been, but they've gotten big theatrical releases. Some of them got distributed by I want to say G Kids. I'm gonna have to pull this up on Amazon to check and make sure. Pardon my mechanical keyboard clicking. Belladonna of Sadness Blu-ray release was from no, it's from a it's from not from uh G Kids. That's from um Delicious Picks. I've never even heard of them before. They must be a new distributor. Okay. You know, they did Bell Dawn of Sadness. They did Funeral Parade of Roses. That's a that's a live action drama. Uh Okay. Um so but yeah, so but not who I was thinking of when I was thinking of the Uh, with a streamer of this. I thought that was a G Kids. Uh, okay, but anyway, point is, it's where we've got an anime dis is they have an anime distrib um, an anime on there that has not been released from the Criterion Collection before. Now I'm, assu now, I'm assuming that the license for Belladonna of Sadness is still standing, because that's not showing as being discontinued or out of print yet. Um, and certainly, Bill Donna's sadness like would fit the Criterion Collection because it's it's a very looking at some of the stills here. It's a very surreal film in a lot of respects. Um, particularly compared to some of the other films that's of the um the same or series, for lack of a better term, that Bill Donna's sadness was. In. Uh, anime Rama trilogy, Hezekiah produced. Uh, the, the the Apache anime, much more out of there. That, um, but on the other hand, like Paprika, like the current. So that one still. Licensed and in print, and that's Sony. Uh, and Millennium Actress, I want to say, is G Kids. For the most recent Blu ray release. That's Shop Factory. Okay. Um, but like all of these feel like works that. Is it Shop Factory who's doing the. Okay, so. Uh, 
And it looks like it's Shout Factory who's doing the uh, um, Blu-ray release for Millennium Actress. I want to say my own G Kids who's partly involved with that um, as well. In any case, um, the fact that those are getting attention on the Criterion channel as well is, <clears throat> and, and that they're and that those are works that are getting the ten, getting brought up for streaming outside of the conventional, um, the the big anime distribution channels, um, leads a degree. Okay, so. The degree of um, suspicion, not suspicion, of um, a little bit of hope that with this merger, we're st like, there's still room to maneuver and move around, and that the and that Funimation and Crunchyroll won't take up all the oxygen. Now. This may not happen in the way that we'd like, because um, that gives them a lot between those two and Netflix. That gives them a lot of leverage for new time for like the new titles. I mean, most of the big titles that we get that go get licensed for simulcast streaming tend to go through. I have in the past gone through either Crunchyroll or Funimation, with occasional stuff trickling through to. Um, high dive. Not to sit so sorry to say that the stuff that high dives get isn't bad. Um, or in fact, the that they don't get good stuff because they got freaking um, right. Um, they've gotten some really, really good stuff. Um, name just literally fell out of my head because it, that's how my brain works. Um, Oh, Maidens in Your Savage Season. Uh, High Dive got a Maidens in Your, in Your Savage Season, which was a very, very well-regarded anime. And I watched it. It was, I agree, that was very well done. Um, well-written, well-directed, and I, th and that was a show that High Dive got and still got a, some sig significant conversation going around it, even though it was licensed by the streaming service that most people consider the third tier. But on top of all of that, you have, there is the past event. There is a lot of stuff in the past, a lot of room to breathe back there. The question is whether or not, I, 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 I partially want to say the question is, will modern audience, will more recent audiences be willing to try their hand at that stuff? But then on the other hand, I remember at a AMV contest at KimuraCon where they had a quote unquote vintage category for the AMV where it was using AMVs for show for whole, older shows and somebody did an AMV for just anime from like the mid 90s and like I was sitting a bunch of sitting in the group of people who, or near a couple groups of people who were significantly younger than me uh 20s older teens and they were recognizing stuff like the big names as they were coming up, boom, boom, boom. So like as much as like you can say, oh, the kid, they're not watching the older stuff these days, and um, like there was uh, there was a panel, digital panel at Crunchyroll Expo about history of anime and tabletop role playing games, where they were talking about the Votoms and Bubblegum Crisis role playing games, and like I've never watched these shows and not familiar with these, whatever, um. But on the other hand, I remember this panel, and I remember, or the, this um, A and B contest, and I remember seeing clips from the dirt, the dirty pair, and Macross. Do you remember Love? Which still at this point has, even with the fences mending between Harmony Gold and Big West and Tatsunoko, and all of them, um, you knew a that still hasn't gotten a U.S. release, and I was sitting in the audience, and I had kids, for lack of a better term. In some cases, yes, they're teenagers. I'm going, oh, Dirty Pair! 
and or Appleseed or Dominion Tank Police. And I'm like, the kids are all right. So I will hope for now that like while I like uh, while I will keep an eye on this and I'm not I'm not happy and ecstatic. I'm not happy I'm not ecstatic about the merger going through necessarily. I like heck and I'll say this before, I'll repeat this until the end of time. Competition or stuff like this is good. Having play having different places to go through is good to go to for anime ideal in an ideal situation this brings license costs up and in a really ideal situation not only does it bring that companies make more money on licenses it also if the studios of the studios who make them are on the production committees that money goes to we get more of that money going to the studios and in turn bringing wages up for animators like it should be because animators should be paid a living wage. By the way, if you're not supporting the Japan Animators Dormitory, you should do so. I will make sure on the YouTube version to put a link in the doobly-doo. But with all of that, uh, the... There should, like, well, there should be competition. I'd rather that competition stuck around we had more competition it stuck around i also know like all right i can i can also oh i i feel comfortable holding out a little bit of hope that this isn't the end of the world that something unexpectedly good can come out of this fingers crossed knock on wood We'll see where things go from there. And if, if everything starts turning out catastrophic within di by the time this video comes out, I will, or is scheduled to come out, I will make a modified version to reflect that. <laughs>